everyone welcome back to spring boot essentials in this video we are going to keep talking about rust template but now we are going to see how to get a list of objects for that and to keep things uh, simple let's go back to anime controller and uh, let's remove this uh, page ball from here and let's return a list here no actually let's go back and just make sure that you copy this entire and just leave it like this if you are not uh, managing with git let's just have like this and remove like this and then you go inside this class and you do the same here you return a list and you just remove this page ball yeah so why am i doing this because uh I would like to keep things uh, simple at least for now and then uh, in the next class we roll back and see how to work with this so I'm doing this because the I don't want the data inside another object so if we go here and uh, we execute now it's not coming inside the content like uh, I don't have anywhere else here yeah, but uh, if you remember the previous class, we had this entire anime list object inside another one, inside content. Now that we have the object the way we are looking for, let's go back to our class and let's see how we can execute REST template to get that data. So by going back to Spring Client here. Okay, we have a couple ways of doing this. Let's uh, start with this get for object. So get for object has a limitation. You can only return an array, not a list of anime. So in this case, we have anime array, anime array, and then like this. We'll probably it will fail. Okay, and then we execute it again. Not that fast. Okay, dun, dun, dun. we forgot to remove this and this. There you go. Now we are returning a list of animes. So by doing this, we have now an array of anime. So it's not a big deal. Uh, you have the array. If you want, you can cast this to a, a list. For example, you could use arrays.slist and you could get uh, this anime array and then you would have a list of anime. So this is a little bit controversial and you may disagree with me, but I think that uh, casting, it's a bad practice. So when you cast, you are telling the compiler to trust you and we have several developers, several developers will have several different opinions, but the compiler only has one. So I'd rather do as the compiler would be uh, happy if I did. So how can we avoid doing this? Well, there is another uh, method here inside REST template that it's a bit more powerful than the get for object. Let's see how that works. Let's copy this guy again. And the name of the method is exchange. So as you can see, we don't have exchange get, exchange post. We only have exchange. The exchange is a bit more powerful because first you can send different type of methods within only one. So for example, I have exchange and then I have to tell what kind of uh, HTTP method I'm going to execute. In this case, get. Second, with this, I can send this request entity. So if we were executing a post, we could send a request entity and we can, could also send some headers, for example, authorization headers. So we are not going to send anything. So we are going to send no. And then this part right here. If we want, we can keep this way and this will return exactly the same thing as we have. So this is a response entity and the array of enemies is inside this response entity, but this is not what we are looking for. We want this to be type safe. More precisely, there is a, uh, an approach. This approach is called a super type tokens. Just Google it. That uh, it's happening behind the scenes of what we are going to do right now. There is a class called parameterized 
type reference. So I know that my English is pretty bad and I will just show you here. So it's par parameterized type reference. And by doing this, you are already telling what you are trying to return. So this is an abstract class. And as you can see here, this is the super type tokens. So you are not casting. So you are being sure that what you are returning is the list. Oops, not this one. I want to send here a list of enemy. So this is what you are looking for. So now we can introduce a local variable and then we can have here exchange enemy list. So now that we have this here, we can remove this guy. And uh, since this is an abstract class, yeah, unfortunately you have to do this, but there is an option with IntelliJ. If you go into IntelliJ preferences and you search for code style, if I'm not wrong, we have this enable formatter. So we just copy this and you can add it here off from now on and on from now on. So if you try to reformat the code, this line will be ignored. So now that I have this, I can uh, just send to my log this enemy list and we just get the exchange enemy list dot get body. Now we can execute. So we do have a compilation now here and I'm not sure exactly why we do have this compilation error. Let's add the here. I don't know if it's this one. List enemy. Okay, that was weird. So IntelliJ is telling me to remove, but the compiler is telling me to not remove. There you go. So anime list and we have the object as a list. So it's a way more powerful to work than uh, just arrays. So we have this uh, exchange again. It, uh, the exchange will do exactly the same thing as the get for entity or get uh, for object. In this case, a get for option will not return a response entity. But the idea is that you can uh, have more options when sending data. For example, if you have a post and you have to send an entire object or getting or putting or patching, so you name it. Okay, so I think for this class, that's it. Let's continue in the next class. So, rest template is a big topic. See you in there. Bye. <laughs>